Hi, my name is James Shepard with North American Bank Card, and I'm currently building a sales team for North American Bank Card as well as running my own uh, credit card processing business. Um, if you watched the video that came right before this, it was called Closing the Sale, and I mentioned there that the first thing we're going to talk about is building trust. So I want to talk with you real briefly about a few things that you can do in the credit card processing industry to build trust with your clients. We talked about how you have to build trust, uh, kind of like in a bank account, like a savings account of trust that you can draw upon later in order to close the sale. So we're going to talk first of all about how to build trust. I'm going to give you about five things that I do to build trust with my clients before I go for the close. Number one, uh, when I uh, walk into the business, first of all, I always name a referral. I name someone that I'm working with. Now, if you're brand new to the credit card processing industry, that's going to be a little difficult to do. Let me explain how to do that. You might go into your first business and you talk to them and they say, you know, I'm thinking it over, so why don't you come back next week? Okay, fine. When you go to the next client, you've got one referral because you can say, you know what, I was just over talking to Tom and I'm actually coming back by next week to uh, talk to him a little bit further, so I thought I would swing by and talk to you about this, Mr. Jones. You've already got a referral, but you've got to name somebody in the area. That will do more to build trust than anything else. Now, if you already have a customer that's processing with you, even if it's with another processor and you're switching to North American Bank Card, you can still use that person as a referral, and you could just say, uh, I do the processing for so-and-so down the street. I don't start off by saying, my, my name is James Shepard with North American Bank Card. I don't start off by saying that in my intro, because that says you're a sales rep. Okay, people don't like sales reps. I start off by saying, my name is James Shepard. I'm an independent business owner here in the local area. My business does credit card processing, and I do the processing for such and such business and for such and such business. I usually name two or three businesses nearby that I do processing with or that I'm in the process of bringing them to the close. I try to name some businesses that are close enough where they would actually know who that person is. Um, so that's what I try to do in my, in my business. Um, now you're going to find out that only about one out of every 20 people actually want referrals. They actually want to call your referrals. If you're getting more than, definitely more than one out of 10 people want to call a referral, um, you might want to be careful about, you're probably not building up enough trust the way that you're approaching the sale. Um, so first of all, in the introduction, I say things like, I do the processing for so-and-so. I mentioned a referral. That builds trust. I know it's a simple thing. Everybody always talks about that, but are, do you do that? In other words, before anything else, how do you start your conversation with the merchant? You look them in the eye, walk in, you look them in the eye and say, my name is James Shepard. I'm an independent local business owner here in the area, and uh, I do the processing for so-and-so. <clears throat> That's how I start uh, my uh, conversation. I do credit card processing for so-and-so down the street, and I thought I'd stop by and chat with you for a minute. Secondly, your appearance. Uh, your appearance, I can sum up in one sentence. Wear what they wear. In my area, I'm in a rural Pennsylvania area. There's a few towns out here that are bigger, but really most of them are pretty small towns. About the biggest town out here has got 50,000 people in it. Most of the towns are very small. And um, uh, as you can tell right now, uh, I just came from selling. I have on a sweater, and I have on a collared shirt, and I have on jeans. And I just came back from making a really big sale. And yes, I sell with jeans on. Um, now, not always. Uh, if I'm going to prospect, if I'm going prospecting to meet brand new people, I wear the same thing I'm wearing now, but I wear dress slacks. Uh, that's the only difference. If I'm going back to meet clients and doing installations, I wear jeans. Now, why do I do that? Because that's what my clients wear. In this area, my clients wear jeans, a collared shirt, and a sweater. Uh, or they might wear dress slacks if they're going to a business meeting. So that's what I wear. Um, you might be in an area where people wear ties when they go into work. The clients you're dealing with, they wear a tie, uh, then wear a tie. Um, you might be in an area where they dress very casually. You might be in an area like Florida where everybody wears shorts and a collared shirt. Wear shorts and a collared shirt. So always look classy. Um, always try to be clean and neat, obviously, but wear what other people wear. Um, if you go too far on either side of that, you're going to get in trouble. You're not going to build up trust. People have trust other people that are like them. If you go in there and you've got on a, a double-breasted suit and they've got on jeans and a t-shirt, um, they're not going to want to buy from you because they don't want to deal with you. They feel like you're, well, you're like trying to be superior to them. Vice versa, if you go in and they, they have on a nice collared shirt and dress slacks and you've got on jeans and a t-shirt, they're also not going to trust you. So you've got to 
analyze what your clients wear. There's many times throughout the day where I change clothes two or three times in a day. I really do. Um, if I'm going to meet a client and I know that particular client likes to dress up, then I throw a tie on and I go to meet that client. I want to match what the client uh, does. So uh, that's one way to build trust. Um, next, sound smart, be smart. What do I mean by that? Um, one thing that I learned a long time ago in my very first job I ever had when I was in high school, I worked at a pet store. And my job was to sell fish tanks. I sold people these fish tanks. And uh, one thing that I learned very quickly about sales is that if you sound smart about one area, people will trust you about a variety of other areas. And so you can build up trust by sounding smart, by being smart about certain things. Let me give you some examples. Sound smart about their equipment. When you walk in, go on images.google.com before you go out and look up terminals. Uh, most people use either a Nurit, N-U-R-I-T, 2085. Look at, take a look at what that looks like. If you saw that terminal, you would easily be able to identify it if you had seen a picture of it before. Uh, they use a VX570 or 510. Uh, they might use an Omni terminal. Um, they might use a Hypercom T4210 or T4220. Um, those are some very common terminals. There are some other ones, Hypercom T7 Plus. Look up, there's five or six terminals right there. Take a look at them. Look at them online. Look up credit card terminals on Google uh, Images. Look at the images so you can recognize them. One of the things that I do when I walk into a place of business, after I introduce myself and start maybe doing some small talk, I'll say, now I see that terminal there, is that, is that the Nareet 2085? Or I'll say, is that a Hypercom T7 Plus? Man, I sound really smart. <laughs> but you know what, it's so easy to identify the terminals, but people think, wow, this guy does actually know something about credit card processing because he identified my terminal. Try that one little trick and it will help you build up trust that you otherwise would not build. Uh, other things, explain interchange plus pricing. After you've gotten their statement and you're doing their statement analysis, before you go say, uh, man, Tom, I can save you 100 bucks. You want to go with me? Before you do that, explain interchange plus pricing. If you don't understand it, go back and watch my other videos. I explain it in detail. Tell them about interchange plus pricing. Talk to them about the credit card processing industry. Now, my view on the industry is we're going more towards being a commodity. And so uh, in our particular business, uh, we got to bring our costs down. And there's a lot of low-cost providers of credit card processing, and you want to be one of those. So explain what you think about the credit card processing industry. Sound smart, be smart. Talk about your business model. I tell everybody that I talk to as a business owner, I tell them something to this effect. I say, hey, you know what, Tom? Uh, my business model, a lot of uh, other businesses, my competitors, they try to make $100 off of every client or $200 off of every client, and they don't have very many clients, Tom. What I'm doing is I'm building a large customer base, but I only make $25, maybe $15 a month off of each client. So I make a lot less off of each client, Tom, but I have a lot more clients. That's how I work. That's how my business model is. Man, they love that. I've had many business owners say, man, I'm the same way. I try to do the same thing. They love to hear about your business model. Tell them about your business model. Um, talk about uh, the statement. Take a look at their statement and show them on the statement and say, now, this right here is your transaction fee. This is this fee. This is this fee. Show that you know something about a statement, if you really do. If you don't, watch my videos about statements and learn something about them. Okay, so sound smart and be smart. I have two more. Uh, ask ownership questions. An ownership question is you asking someone a question that when they answer it, they're thinking about what it would be like to own your product or service. If you're a real estate agent, you might ask someone, Bob, if you bought this house, do you think you would keep it this color or, or might you paint it a different color like blue or, or gray or something like that? Well, he's going to look at that house and say, man, you know what, I think I would repaint this house. What is that doing? That's causing him to want that house. It's causing him to imagine himself living in that house. You can do the same thing with credit card processing. Uh, I wrote down a few of them here. Uh, I asked some questions like, now Tom, uh, where do you like to have the statement mailed to? Do you have everything mailed here or do you have it mailed to your house or your accountant? Where do you have stuff mailed? He says, uh, I want you to mail it to here. Wow, he just said, I want you to mail it here. Sounds to me like you're getting pretty close to getting a sale right there, doesn't it? So ask an ownership question. How about, uh, Tom, I noticed the uh, credit card terminal that you have here, it hooks up to a phone line. Now, if I hook this up to an internet line, your, uh, your transaction fee would go from $0.08 cents down to $0.03. Cents. 
and it would be a lot faster for you to, to transact business. Would you Do you like your terminal the way it is hooked up to a phone line, or would you rather have one that was hooked up to an internet line? He says, man, you know, I never thought of that before, James. I like the terminal I have just fine. You can just reprogram this one. Okay. Wow, he just said you can reprogram this one. Sounds like you're about to get a sale, doesn't it? Uh, I wrote down one other one. Uh, asking about if they like their equipment. Um, man, you know, I noticed that equipment there, at, that's, that, that equipment's about five to ten years old. It's still fine. I can reprogram it for you. Do you like that terminal, Tom, or would you rather I give you a free terminal that's an upgrade? Boy, you know what, James? I think I'd rather you give me that free terminal. Wow, look what he just said. I wish you'd give me that free terminal. Sounds like you're just about to get a sale, doesn't it? So what are we doing? We're building up trust. One last one real quickly. Uh, don't be desperate. This is probably the number one reason that sales reps don't have trust because they seem desperate. Now let me explain something to you. You go into a business owner. He makes 60, 70,000, maybe 100,000, maybe $200,000 a year because he took a business and built it from the ground up. He's been with his current processor for 10 years. Now, this business owner, he wants to make a good decision. If you explain everything to him in a professional manner, and he says, you know, I'd like to think about this for a couple days. If your response seems desperate to him, I have news for you. It's not his fault that you need the money. I know about money pressure, believe me, I know what it means to be under severe financial pressure. Most people in sales do. But people that are good at sales, people that make money in sales, realize that they absolutely cannot, under any circumstances, seem desperate when they're in front of a client. Let me tell you something about yourself that you didn't know. You probably didn't know this, but right before you go into a sale, you need to realize you have $10,000 in the bank. You have money coming in hand over fist over the next couple weeks. All of your bills are paid, everything is on time, and you have no financial pressure. You probably didn't know that, did you? Um, now, of course, that might not be true for you. You might not be at a point in your sales career where you have 10 grand in the bank. You might not be at a point where you know you have money coming in, but you have to think that way before you go into the client because it's not the client's fault. They built their business from the ground up. They've done what they needed to do. You haven't built your business yet, so it's not their fault, it's your fault. So until you build your business up, you're gonna have to make a, a big effort to view each sale as if you don't need the money, but you wanna start a relationship with that client, you want to invest your time with that client, you wanna serve their needs, and most importantly, you really honestly believe it's the best deal for the client. When I go in and talk to a client, I'm going to save them 100 bucks a month, 200, 300 dollars a month. So my sense of urgency isn't that I need the money, even though sometimes I do need the money. That's not my sense of urgency. My sense of urgency comes from the fact that I can't believe they're going to go another month and spend another 300 bucks they don't need to spend. That's my sense of urgency. It really is. And that comes across in the sales process. So I have a sense of urgency, but I'm not desperate. So analyze your sales process. Find out if you feel desperate. If you do, you need to take a few seconds before you go inside that business and think about that business owner. They built that business from the ground up, and the fact that you really need that commission, it's not their fault. Don't be desperate. Desperate salespeople do not make very many sales. Um, so don't be desperate. Ask ownership questions. Be smart. Talk smart. Say smart things. It gets them trusting you. Uh, make sure your appearance matches your clients and make sure that your introduction includes a referral in the local area. Just a few tips that will help you to build some trust as you're moving forward towards the close in the sales process. Uh, if you have any questions, if you're interested in signing up with North American Bank Card, I highly recommend it. It's a great company to work with. I would really enjoy working with you, helping you get some sales. I was Just a second ago, I was texting and emailing a bunch of sales reps that are about to close some sales, and I'd like to do the same with you. It'd be a lot of fun. I really love sales, as you can tell. I look forward to working with you. Give me a call at 814-515-9526 or click the link in the notes below to go to my webpage. Thanks so much. Have a great day.